Hello, this is Rachel from 7 and All, and today I'm going to be taking you on a thorough look inside flip through of living art lessons from Masterbooks. We'll be looking at the lesson text as well as the artist journal. This is meant to be a year long introduction to art curriculum for fourth through sixth graders. The way that it is structured is through going over the seven elements of art. So the, there's units throughout the year that you'll spend a couple weeks going over lines in depth and then shapes and color, etc., etc. So this is the main structure of it. You have many opportunities in this course for the child to be hands-on with creating their own art projects. And they also do learn a little bit. There's brief introductions to some very well-known artists and kind of talking about how they used these elements within their own art. So this is recommended for fourth through sixth graders, but I do recommend never just look at grade level recommendations, but do look at the content. That's why I try to create these videos so that you can actually see what you're dealing with in a curriculum, because I know it's so hard just from the you know <laughs> cover <laughs> to know what you're getting. Um, because when I look at this, I'm thinking if you had a sixth grader who was super into art and you've done a lot of art study and art practice, um, much of this is vocabulary building and um, basic kind of, it is, it is meant to be a foundational course in art, an introduction to art. So if you have, you know, a sixth grader who's super into art, this probably is not going to be your main pick because a lot of this would be review. It's a lot of foundational concepts that they probably have already been exposed to in many different ways. But if you have a child who is either on the younger side, so on the maybe third, fourth grade level, and you're willing to do this a little bit with them um, and not have it totally independent, I think that could be a good fit. Or if you have a child on the older end of the age range and they're interested in learning about art, but they haven't had much opportunity yet, like they, they haven't done much with art yet, that's when I think this could be a good fit. But if you have some a kid who's already quite the artist, already knows all these different terms related to art, then you, this is probably going to be too introductory for them. But let's look at it so that you can see for yourself. We'll take a good look through the lines unit, which is the first unit. You can see, kind of at a glance, we have very, very visual pages. There's a lot of illustrations throughout. Um, they're giving the child opportunities to look at the concepts at work within different um, examples and illustrations. We, there's a lot of vocabulary building, so we're practicing horizontal, diagonal, vertical, curly, looped. Different terms that you can use to describe lines, different types of lines. Um, we work on observing observations. Think about how you can combine traits of lines and identifying different types of lines within art. So we're just going all in on lines. This is week two already. The readings are very short for each week. I will show you how this is scheduled out in just a minute, but at the end of each section, each unit on an element of art, we get to learn about an artist. And the first one is Pablo Picasso. So there's a little biography of the artist, some examples of their work and talk about them. And then there will be a art project related to that artist's art. And that will be, we have a little bit more here. Okay, looking at lines in nature, always cool. lines, scavenger hunt, so they kind of direct you towards projects and they do direct you to when there's a page in the artist journal that you can be working on. Then we have a really cute art project here, jellyfish lines. Now something I want to point out, which is pretty neat I think in an art book for kids, is that the art examples throughout the book uh, for the projects that you're doing, this isn't an example of an adult doing the art project and then your child is supposed to do their own version of it. They are very clearly art projects done by kids with, you know, realistic levels of what you would see in the end result from the project. They are not these super fancy projects that then your child is going to get different results simply because they are a child. Um, and I think, I think that's neat. It's of course important for children to see um, professional artwork, but in instructions for a project, the fact that they are very kind of realistic. You can see that here in this little example of a kind of a landscape thing. 
it looks realistic at the level of kind of art that a child would be making. So he, then we are going through, of course, many different elements. We learned terms, one point perspective. Let me see, I can just show you a little bit more of a flip through here. Using perspective, observing space. Here we have our fat cat. Get, it's not all painting, it's not all paper. We get to do different things. So this is in the form. So we're thinking about 3D shapes, the unit on form. We've got a 3D paper activity using aluminum foil. But we also do get some looks at actual great art in here as well. Here we have Michelangelo. So that's the look at what you can expect from the book. And then the artist journal, I'm gonna show you as well. I'm trying to, like I'm trying to show you mostly the lines unit to just give you that kind of one unit example. I do wanna show you that they include in here a schedule for the whole curriculum. So they schedule it out to last you 32 weeks, I think, for the whole year, but they only schedule it two days a week. And you typically have a little bit of reading and then you have a little bit of work in the student journal, in the artist journal, sorry. And so in the observing lines unit, you have some pages that you start with, and they start very, very basic, like, but they start with good activities that will let your child think. How do I draw five evenly spaced horizontal lines in this box, 10 evenly spaced vertical lines in this box, 20 evenly spaced diagonal lines, so planning space and all that, identifying matching names with different lines, of course, that's a, this is where I'm saying some of the activities are definitely perhaps on the easier side if your student was a little older, but if art is is uh, branching out of the comfort zone for your student, that's where I think this could really fit well with an older student. But otherwise with younger students, I think this could be a lot of fun. So you see, it's not a ton of worksheet type of work. Um, they just have a few here to kind of work on this vocabulary that you're doing. Okay, what shapes can you make from adding these different lines together? That's cool. Identifying shapes, seeing what you can make with shapes. These are all just foundational ideas to later continuing much further in art. And I will say we, um, I don't have this actually because we're, we're not currently using this in our homeschool. Um, but my sister, who is an artist, who is in college studying art, has a bit of a habit of collecting art books and art resources all the time. So he, she had this, and I wanted to show it to you guys because she found it very interesting to see what um, resources there are for homeschoolers to teach their kids art. So we've got, I, I love mixing color activities. Those are fun. And so there's just different activities in here, but as you could see within the book itself, there's also other things that aren't necessarily using the journal all the time. We're getting out aluminum foil or clay, and they have a list of all the resources that you're gonna need. All right, I hope it was helpful to get a glimpse at this. Let me know if you've used this or if you've been considering using this in your homeschool. And if you like nerdy homeschool conversations, definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Seven and All because I have lots more videos for you. All right, I'll be seeing you, bye.